In the time after plastic injection molding and before the rise of 3D scans, Mattel's Masters of the Universe sat atop the throne of the action figure kingdom. Such success breeds those paying homage to greatness and pretenders to the throne. These are their tales. Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, uh, presented by Funko, <laughs> and uh, this is the Savage World Thundercats from, I want to say 2018 or 2019, I was able to pick up the first series, and then it was, it seemed like ages before the other ones even came out, I never did see the second series in the stores, but I have the complete first series of these figures, which includes your key characters, including this gentleman right here, Lion O, made in the Masters of the Universe style, the five and a half inch squatty buff ass figure. Here is Lion O in all of his Lion OE glory. Uh, we have a vertical uh, box that looks a lot like the Masters of the Universe box. We have an illustration of lion -O, and of course we have the, the figure. And you can see pretty much the whole thing. You can see his accessories come in a plastic bag behind him. And uh, there's not much else as far as packaging is concerned. And uh, yeah, the, the figure didn't break apart in the, in the box. Um, imagine that. Freaking Mattel. Anyway, as we turn the box around, we're only looking at one box because they all look pretty much the same with the exception of the figure that comes inside. We see wave one, and that is the wave that I have. I was unable to, to get any of these. I know they did eventually come out, um, and you can still find them here and there. Uh, but wave one includes Lino, Panthro, Mumra, and Slythe. Um, and, you know, the, the guys that you're really going to want to get Honestly, it's going to be, you know, lion -O and then Mumra, and then down the line. Um, you know, everybody's kind of got their favorites. Uh, me, personally, um, Mumra, pretty awesome looking character. Great design on uh, for a, a villain. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of, uh, of ghostly, evil monster crap. So, uh, yeah, great looking monsters, great looking stuff designed in these... Thundercats, and uh, when you combine that with the Masters of the Universe style figures, and unlike the uh, horror figures, and unlike the DC figures, they didn't decide to like, oh, let's make them look like barbarians. They just basically did the Thundercats in five and a half inch uh, style, in, in He-Man style. And um, I've had these in the box for a long, long, long time, and I cannot wait any longer. So let's see what these figures look like outside of the box. All right, so let's take a look at lion -O, the leader of the Thundercats, and kind of what everybody would have wanted if you were only going to get one of these figures. Most people were going to get this one, lion -O. He comes uh, with his uh, his gauntlet here with the jewels on there, and he uh, he also comes with his sword um, that can you know, sight beyond sight. But he can't really hold it up to his face like he does in the cartoon, but that's fine because the old LJN figure couldn't do that anyway. And uh, this one, the difference is this one's actually in scale with your Masters of the Universe figures so you can have thundercats versus masters of the universe 
and uh, it, or Thundercats meet the masters of the universe if you want to, and uh, they all display well, pretty pretty well together, and uh, yeah, looks like how he's supposed to look. I don't have a lot of gripes on the design. It's the design of Lino. It looks like him. It would be nice if they'd added an action feature, got his eyes to light up or something like that. But then again, these figures weren't very expensive. I want to say they were somewhere in between $10 and $15 at retail. So not too shabby. Um, they've got the, you know, the six points of articulation that you would expect them to have, much like the old school Masters of the Universe figures. I have heard tale that these are a little bit, uh, a little bit fragile. And you want to be careful with the legs because the legs will pop off. Uh, so unfortunately, um, they're not as uh, playable or, or as, uh, you know, don't you can't be as uh, wild and crazy with the posing. And I can see here as I'm trying to pull the arm up, it's, it's hitting a, a stiff spot and uh, not able to get it all the way up. And I feel like if I pulled it a little bit further, it might just break the arm off on the pin, which would not be a good thing. So I'll just sort of leave it alone. But then again, I'm not using these to play with. Um, you might pose them here and there and put them up on a shelf. And that's about what they're worth to me. But for a kid, you know, wouldn't be the, the best thing in the world to get. But then again, who, who, what kid gives a crap about the Thundercats? Not too many, not that I can think of, uh, but but that's Lion O, and he's pretty cool. All right, so here is Panthro. Panthro, um, and he looks again just like he uh, he did back in the day. Um, he has that you know that buff squatty Masters of the Universe body is the only real difference in the, you know, his articulation a little bit different. I'm not, I can't remember exactly what the articulation was on the old Thundercats LJN figures. I know they had a little clip on the back and you could, their arms would waggle around and swing their weapons. And speaking of weapons, he comes with these nunchucks uh, that have little uh, back scratchers on them. <laughs> It's kind of what they look like. The, the old LJN figure had an actual chain link in between them. It was a really cool accessory for a figure. Um, this one just has a, a piece of soft plastic, rubbery plastic in between these. I mean, it looks fine. It looks fine. It's not like you could do much with them anyway, since he's only got the, you know, the limited articulation. But for display, um, among your five and a half inch figures, this is a nice figure. It's got a good paint job. It's got a you know, nice design to it. Of course, it's the Thundercats design. Um, so it looks how you'd want it to look. You take the Thundercats, you put them into five and a half inch scale figures, and this is what you get. And, and I like it. Uh, Panthro, pretty awesome. All right, next is Slythe. Interesting story for Mr. Slythe here. On my, I want to say, fifth or sixth birthday, uh, my mom took me to Universal Studios. Took me and my sister to Universal Studios, and it rained. It rained all day, and almost everything there <laughs> was was kind of either either closed or or suspended or or whatever and it rained and rained it was like a record rainfall in los angeles at the time and uh, there were like floods in the street and uh, my mom wasn't sure that she could drive us all the way home that we might have to stop and uh, stay somewhere for the night but we ended up making it home and i remember um that that she brought with her my birthday present and uh, one of them at least and this was it this it was the old school slithe figure um which was actually really cool had a lot of awesome detail on it this one's a little bit more simplified looks a little bit more like the cartoon um in as far as the color scheme is concerned but has all the nice little details you might want on him he's a a uh, weird lizard mutant guy and uh, he's got lots of cool little paint applications it looks very nice he comes with this big axe um, which is also very awesome looking these these weapons that these things come with rival the the masters of the universe origins accessories honestly uh, when it comes to paint jobs when it comes to uh just just sort of the little cool little details you can see some cuts into it like it's been used over and over again it's got a big tail 
Um, it doesn't move, it's not articulated. Legs are articulated, waist is articulated, arms and head are articulated. Um, but it, the, because of the tail of where it is, it, the, he's hard to stand up is the point that I'm trying to get at. He's a little bit hard to stand up. You think with the big tail, you could use him kind of like a tripod and uh, he'd stand up easier. Um, because the the limited articulation on the legs, um, it's, it's, it makes him sort of top heavy and he leans forward. But as far as the look of this figure is concerned, he's awesome and you can get him to stand up. It's not impossible to stand him up. It's just a little bit more difficult. And that is slight. All right, so finally, you know I saved my favorite for last, and here is uh, my favorite design on a character in all of the Thundercats, Mumra the Ever-Living. Look at this. He's got uh, the, the, the blue skin. He's got the red accents, the, the insignia with the double snake on the chest. He's got blue, red, and gold, and, and tan colors, or taupe, if you will, kind of all over him. Lots and lots of paint applications on this figure. Big red rubber cape, um, you know, poses about as well as he can, considering all the garbage he's got all over him, but looks amazing. Um, as far as these are concerned, this is about as good as it gets. Uh, it, without changing the design on the on the character, they haven't added anything and they haven't taken anything away. He looks how he's supposed to look. He has the the you know the the remnants of the wrappings. He has his his helmet with the double snakes pointed at each other. He has the gold, the the shiny gold, uh, the uh, gauntlets and uh, leg guards. Um, with with uh, with hay or or fur coming out from underneath them, very very cool looking design on a figure. One of my as a as a child, I really liked the Mumra the Ever Living figure, and much like the old figure, he comes with his uh, double sword uh, deal here with uh, two um, sort of uh, what the uh, the Middle Eastern style blades, but with a little bit of flair, like some cuts into them, almost has a uh, Klingon look about it. Very, very cool. They all hold their weapons fairly well. That you know, that you're you're either going to be able to barely get it into their hand, <laughs> or you're going to be able to get it in there and it'll be super loose. They're kind of hit and miss on these Funko figures, and they're not necessarily made to be put into dynamic poses. They're made to kind of sit in the, the old school masters of the universe pose. And so they kind of do what they were designed to do. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I like this figure. This is Mumra, the ever living. Okay, so at the end of the day, the, the Funko's Savage World Thundercats. They didn't do a lot of changing or experimenting or reimagining of the designs on the figures. They basically just did a direct translation from the old school figures or the old school designs of the Thundercats and translated it into the five and a half inch scale. And that for me is just fine because then when we have Lion-O meet He-Man, when we have Panthro meet Man at Arms, when we have Skeletor meet Mumra the Ever Living, we have a, a you know sort of a perfect uh, translation is the, is the best word that I can come up with when it comes to the way that these figures were designed. I really, really like these figures. Um, I wish that series two would have been easier to find at the time. I didn't end up picking up the second wave of these figures, which included uh, Monkeyan and uh, the Jackal Man and uh, Tigro, Tigro? T Tigro, whatever. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Great, great set of figures, and uh, they were definitely a great bargain when they came out. A little bit tougher to find nowadays. Of course, they're not in production anymore. Do hope that we get some more Funko Savage World in the future, but I'm not going to be holding my breath. And for now, this is the Funko Savage World Thundercats. Thundercats.